Welcome, bienvenue, and welcome back to Opus Manium with Light. Seems people have been enjoying these episodes, so we're going to keep them going. Now, I can't guarantee optimality on anything, so if you have a better solution, feel free to leave it in the comments, on Twitter, or in Discord. All the links are down in the doobly-doo. So today we've got airship fuel, and I'm going to walk you through my process of how I got to where I was going, and we started off with something incredibly slow and relatively small. But as you can see, that first little bit, it covers an area that, well, empty space is not your friend. Going over empty hexes, you're probably not doing it as well as you could be. But this was a nice, cheap and small solution. It was okay. Then compact it down a bit, remove three empty spaces. And now you've got this one where we bring it over and bind it, salt it, move it into position up here, start off a new pairing, salt it, and you'll notice we only use this one extra space. Now, you're like, Light, you could have saved on that empty space. Well, you can't really because you need the whole piece separate from the uh, entry point. So this is as small as I'm confident you can get. Now, it's not as cheap as you can get it. It's just as small as you can get it. We call this one wheelchair because it kind of looks like a person reclining in a motorized wheelchair sort of thing. So we'll skip over to the one that is actually the cheapest because anytime you use a piston, you have to ask, ask yourself, can you use just a regular arm? And here we are with just a regular old arm. And it's all you really need to get the job done because now we can spin it around, use up way too much area, but you've got the thing that you're trying to, mil to build with only using a simple non-piston arm. I heard a little bit of scuttlebutt that they're considering raising the price of the piston such that it'll be easier to undercut it with an arm and potentially some uh, tracks, possibly a multi-arm. But I believe it's the, the arm and some track that would be used to undercut the piston, but it's scuttlebutt. There's no guarantee on any of this. So here we are with lowest cost area, nowhere near minimal and the cycles out of this world. Now, getting to optimality on this one was a bit of a journey for me. So we started with the sewing machine where we've got a fancy thing that happens right here up the, at the top where it makes a continually bound string of these fire atoms and then slices them and moves them into position. But anytime you do a binding and then unbind it, you're probably doing more work than you need to. So this was never really likely to be the optimal solution. I was just building it to see how this particular mechanism worked in case we need it later. And, you know, fun. So there's the sewing machine. Then we were like, well, what if we instead try, oh, the other thing about the sewing machine, only use two of the three uh, inputs. No way it's gonna be fast enough with only two of the three. So here we are with all three. The trouble with this one is that we're not pulling from any of them as fast as we possibly could. Because this one, well, this one you're pulling as fast as you can, but this one is bottlenecking the other two. And so even without looking at this part down here, you know it's not going to be optimal. You're not pulling at the asymptotic, asymptotically optimal route, uh, rate. And so here we are. We're grabbing from this one relatively quickly, but even that isn't perfect. But this one was just a thought experiment on ways of assembling it faster. So if we combine the sewing machine with what we learned from that, we get ourselves this. So we've got a sewing machine on the top, we've got a sewing machine on the bottom, and then something similar to the previous back and forth here on the left. But in the end, we're still trying to pull this comparably to two other ones and it's never really gonna work out all that great, but it had some promise. And so when it runs, it gets a great rhythm to it. 
it's a really fun sort of music to it. And I really enjoy the music part of this game, even though it's not part of what you're supposed to do. But unfortunately, that sort of fun rhythm is indicative that there's something wrong with your machine. Because if it's offset like that, it most likely means something isn't timed optimally, and in this case, it's not. So if we scroll on down to lockstep, <clears throat> we fix the timing issues and make a much more boring result. I say more boring because the rhythm isn't nearly as interesting. Just pounding away one, two, three, and then skipping four, it's not nearly as fun, but it is in fact faster. So instead of having 29 cycles, it's only 27. We fixed the, the cyclage and we get something that's more efficient. Then it dawned on me how to get the asymptotic results in a different way. Now this one is off the wall. It is nothing like the others. It uses a whole bunch of tracks and arms. But the goal for this one is to move it as quickly from where it starts to where it ends. And for every four pulls from the sources, we get three products as close together as possible. So in the other one, you, you didn't quite get that. This one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by pulling one from each of these and moving it to a fourth input over here. So this traversal is very easy. You just move from here to there. This traversal has to go around the back, as does this one. We use the triple arm for the sake of reset, because once this guy gets all the way around, it's just one simple swap over. This one will get to here, which means it's two swaps away, which is too long. So by having the tri arm, it doesn't have to reset. It's already in position for the next go. And we got a little piston to push this one in at the appropriate time. We've got three arms here for pulling this one across in the appropriate cyclage. This one is part of this right here. And this guy is pulled by these. The reason we've got more arms on this track than all the others is because we need to pull it further from the middle. You could pull it the full distance from here, but this one, we grab it from here and pull it all the way up. Whereas this one just moves two, this one moves three. And to get all of the uh, timings right, we need that many arms. Stupid numbers that aren't just multiples of two, well, powers of two. And so you can see it in action. We move this one over, we're moving these two around, and then we grab and pull them up through and again and again and so we get three outputs for each of the four inputs and they're all right in a row that'll be important in the next one but it's really fast it's gorgeous and looks like a butterfly hence it being called monarch Now, there are likely other ways of getting this done because these tracks are where I like them. Most likely you could get away with some tracks somewhere else. You could rearrange this a little bit and still get the same result. But in the end, you need to have it doing that one, two, three in a row or else you're going to lose a cycle here or there. So this 19, I'm fairly certain is optimal. I have not yet unlocked the global uh, record uh, leaderboard. That's what I'm, what I'm looking for. The global leaderboard, you have to finish the story mode before it'll unlock. And I haven't been pushing very fast through the story mode because I've been working on optimizing things. Now, the next one is actually a de-optimization. I'm making it slower, but only by one cycle. But I make it significantly cheaper and significantly smaller and it combines the idea from Monarch with the idea from Lockstep and back and forth. Well, from Dance and Lockstep and all those. So here we've got the Monarch idea pushing these through on this side. 
And we've got the dance idea over here of assembling from a single source. And so the trouble with this one, the reason we lose that one cycle is because we do both of these and then that one. So we're one cycle behind the Monarch solution. What you would need is somehow for it to do the first one of these and then this one and then the second one of these. And I just don't see how to make that happen. So it's very close to optimal and it is really quite good. And by saving on the cost and the area, this may very well be a better, albeit subjectively, solution. And so I'm particularly proud of this one because it takes two very separate ideas and combines them to get to a fairly solid solution. If you've got a fantastic airship fuel design that you'd like to show off, or if you've got one that's totally outlandish, I would love to see them. Places to do that again are in the comment section, on Twitter, or on Discord. But thank you for watching this episode. I will see you in the next episode of Opus Monium with Light.